In this video, I'm going to try and show you the video output from Raspberry Pi, Retro Pi, onto an HD TV. And um, previous videos I've done show how shaders work and affect the quality of the picture to try and emulate that CRT look and feel that you'd get if you were playing it on original hardware on the old style CRT TVs. Hopefully within this, when we look at different shaders, you can see how close it gets or how close it doesn't get to original hardware and I'll try and compare it on that original hardware in a minute. But this is useful to see because most people have HD TVs and it's good to know the ways that you can change this and how close you can get it to that authentic type of feel. There's probably some other settings that you can change in the configuration that relate to this um, with the output but essentially the biggest change when you're using RetroPie would be to apply shaders. Now I'm pretty sure well, by default I haven't specified any shaders so what you're seeing now should be without a shader basically. The TV um, that it's on is a 26 inch Sony LCD 720p and it's obviously quite a modern TV and you can see looking at the graphics here uh, if you pause the video you can see that it's quite jagged pixelated edges around the sprites and um, generally the artwork there it's not as, as clear as it should be but using shaders goes some way to sort of smooth that over or apply a different effect and what I'll do I'll flip through a couple of the shaders that I think look good on the Mega Drive um, and then we can try and compare that on the actual hardware so if I start this up a second so fire in here open that up um, what we'll do is just flip to some of the more popular shaders for the Mega Drive I've narrowed it down to about three but it's all personal taste you might want to use different ones and as in the previous video um, you can flip through the shaders using hotkeys and I'm going to jump to some now so if I hold down my hotkey and you'll see at the bottom of the screen the yellow text pop up and it shows which shader it's using some are clearly not designed to emulate the retro look and feel they're just effects like this water paint one you're not really going to want to play the game in that um, so scrolling through these options what I'm looking for is let's have a look stock SNES one's geared particularly for the SNES so I don't think there's any Mega Drive specific ones out there at the moment. Um, okay, there's a scanline one, it's that retro arch default, pixelated phosphor, uh, one I'm looking for. Here we go, NTSC Pass 4. Now that's not, it's a bit dark, but you kind of get a scanline effect and it doesn't look too bad. If I play with that and set, get a sort of feel for how that looks. I mean, it doesn't look as as bad as it did a moment ago, I think there's a few more smooth edges and it, it does have a bit of a CRT feel with the way that the image is broken up a little. Perhaps not as scanlines, but it's, it's some type of effect. It's not too bad, that's, that's one option on a, on a shader front, and it certainly looks a lot better on a um, modern high def TV. So let's flip it to another shader. Um, another one I've got here, go through that way. Looking for LCD ones. There we go. LCD three times. Let's try that. Um, again, that's that's not too bad. That's brighter than the previous one. Let's see a little bit more. It's still got a, a style of scanline effect on there. But it's pretty easy to see what's going on on the sprites. I think that's that's not a bad approach for. Um, certainly looks good on Minecraft games. Anyway, I'm tempted to keep that one. Um, but again, in the moment, we're trying to have a look at how this looks on the original hardware and see if I can, you can see the difference. I mean, I'm not, I'm not getting down into the sort of end detail of this. I'm sure that, um, you're never going to get a precise emulation unless you use the original um, hardware in every way that you possibly can. But it's not a bad attempt to replicate that. And um, so the last, the last shader I've got down there was one called CGWG, I'll just see if we can flip to that. Didn't look too bad when I tried it before. Here we go, CG, CRT, no, that's not it. That's it there. Oh, no, it looks a bit dark, actually. That's it, CRT, GLSL. I'm not sure the difference between GLSL and GLSLP, but the GLSL extension seems to look marginally better. Okay, I'm feeling a bit sluggish actually, it's a bit slower than it was before, I don't know if that's straining trying to put this shader on. Um, but 
again, you know, it definitely feels slow to play that one, so it's probably not the best bet. But it does look pretty good. I think you'd be fairly happy with that. But as you can see, you've got a few options to tweak how this does look when it scales up on an HD TV. And um, they're all they're not bad at all really, given the given the improvements it makes over there. Okay, so here's Streets of Rage again on um, original hardware, Japanese Mega Drive. Um, got original joypad, goes out via SCAR into an XRGB Mini, which upscales it and puts it on the HDTV, the same screen I was using earlier in the video. And the only setting I've really got in the XRGB is pretty vanilla settings, except I've enabled scan lines, so to try and get a bit more of a CRT feel for that, but obviously that could get turned off. Uh, you can see here that it's um, well, this is about as authentic as it's going to get without using literally a CRT TV. So this should be pretty close to the original hardware in every respect. And it's a good comparison for the earlier part of the video. You can see um, what it should be trying to emulate. So if I go into this, you can see that um, obviously this is running, like I say, on original hardware. So there's no slowdown at all if it, um, as it goes. Whereas with some of the shaders, maybe it slows down a little. So it's a little different in that respect. And as we go in here you can see, although well, it might be a, a little bit bright settings here, you can obviously I can set that to be a bit darker. Um, the, the graphics here are, are pretty close to some of those shader effects. It's not, it's not a massive difference, particularly I think that LCD 3x1 might look a bit like this. Um, given that they're sort of software emulated, they do a pretty good job. Some of those are system geared specifically, like some of the SNES named shaders are, are geared just for that. But with personal preference, you can choose a shader that you think um, suits the Mega Drive better. Um, I'd say that LCD 3 one was pretty good, or maybe that NTC Pass 4 shader. You can set in emulation in RetroArch and RetroPie a shader per system so you can get your favourite ones set up there. But I would say it's pretty impressive so how those shaders get close to, to this view. I mean, it, it may not be exactly this, but it's it's pretty damn good the way that they've um, tried to emulate this this uh, graphical look. I can see on this one it's not worlds apart. Like I say, it's probably a little bit different, but unless you're if you really want sort of accurate um, replication, you probably need original hardware and, and go down that route. But uh, all in all, it's pretty impressive. So if there's any um, queries you've got on how to use shaders with RetroPie, just have, take a look at some of the other videos I've got showing that, or uh, add uh, something in the comments in this video if you want to know about the, the video I put um, on RetroPie. But it, I'd say, uh, I'm just looking at this now, you can see the scan lines pretty clearly on this. Obviously, this is the, the as genuine reference as you're going to get. And um, I'm sure some of those shaders look, look pretty close to this. Definitely worthwhile setting up your, your RetroPie configuration to start using them. Hopefully the video's been of use to some of you. Thanks.